Okay, I've unwrapped it and now I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, basically create a texture for it. Now I've gone back in since and I've readjusted this top uh, tail fin because I, I didn't like the way I had it laid out. So this is uh, this is much nicer the way it's laid out here. I've already exported it. So let's go now into Photoshop. And here in Photoshop I've got the, um, the image file has been brought in as you can see and um, basically the UV mapping is brought in as a it, it comes with its own alpha alpha so you can place it over the top of other colored backgrounds which is what I've done I've actually gone through and created a whole texture map here and I'm just going to show you the layers um, one by one so basically when it first comes out of um, blender you'll get something like this you'll get a, um, a UV map that looks like this. It'll be a uh, alphaed uh, UV map. What that means is is that the checkered areas are actually transparent, um, and it looks like these other areas are semi-transparent as well. But um, you can use it as a guide to create your own texture map. So what's the first thing I did? First thing I did is I put in a little colored background uh, just to make it easier for me to paint on. Then I created a layer where I, I got the base color for the whole model. What I might do though is go up to our actual UV map and I'll decrease its opacity so that it is you know really just a guide and I can see the colors um, that I'm going to be laying out much more clearly. Again, I toggle that on and off as I do this. So the first thing I did is I actually drew out um, the base color of the plane. And that's uh, this this color here. As you can see, I've got another reference image here. It's this base color, the main paint job color. So I've just using the lasso tool in Photoshop. Um, I just drew lassos around each um, area, like so, in Photoshop. And then I pick the color. I actually picked it off the actual illustration here, off the actual um, reference image. So I could pick that color. Uh, and you do that by just using an eye picker. I usually hit B on the brush and I hold down Alt. It'll bring up a color picker. B for brush, Alt, let you select color. And then I come back into my, my original here and just go Alt backspace and it'll fill in that color for me. I'm not going to do that there. Okay, so I've got the base color there. What did I do next? I like to keep everything on separate layers because it makes it easier to manage and easier to handle. So um, as you can see, I've painted the, the cockpit here in, in quite a lot of detail, but I've tried to also follow um, the geometry that was underneath. So the, um, you know, these little struts that are part of the window are also following very closely the geometry that's underneath. And I've got other bits breaking off here. Uh, it really follows fairly closely um, the reference image I've got, as I can see here. I looked at the reference image and then just tried to create, mimic it basically. But it's always important to paint it. You know, some students might think, oh, look, I'll just copy the reference image. That's not on. You will not get very far in the industry if you're just um, like cut and pasting textures off photographs. It's it's a you know there's a couple of reasons it doesn't look very good but also it's um it's uh, you know copyright infringement so don't be doing that all right so I've laid down the base color then what I did is I added the camo pattern so I just painted in some um, camouflage patterns and match tried to match it up with the pattern that was on here so this was just hand painted using a brush went in and painted these these camouflage patterns. Um, as you can see here, there's a bit missing, but there's a decal that goes here. Okay, what else have we got? Then I started putting on the actual spots. They were, again, just drawn using a mask. Elliptical marquee tool. Draw a mask like that and then just fill it with color. Then I drew another circle and filled it with color. So I've gone through and added a whole lot of other decals. Again, these are all just hand-drawn. I've tried to add every little, well, lots of little colors that are that are part of the, 
the the plane again I could be adding even more um, of these like little red highlights as well the more detail you put in the more it makes the plane um, look like the real thing um, on this particular plane the underneath has a, has a different color as well as we can see down here the underneath the plane sort of a, a slightly lighter blue um, and it's also got these white stripes here on the uh, just for the tail so I put them on as well some more um, decals just on the side of the plane again I just made one with that same technique and then underneath here this is where I went into a little bit more detail and I'd probably you do this um, on the whole plane as a last finishing touch is to draw these sort of lines on the plane now this you know, it's not that detailed here, but when it's a small um, uh, unit in an RTS game, that will give the illusion that there's a lot more detail than, than there really is. And I'll mirror this and copy it on the other side as well. More decals, text, I put BBC on the side of the plane. What else have we got? That's pretty much it actually, I think. Let me just check. Now that really didn't take that it, it, it's not hard to do, it's just time consuming to do this sort of thing. But again, like I said, the more detail you have, the nicer the, 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 the actual finished texture map will look. Um, I also got some blue here that I can toggle on for glass. And um, I will later go in and try painting in highlights and shadows on this as well. But let's not get too far ahead. This is just the basic layout of what the texture map looks like. So I'm happy with that. I go File, Save As. In fact, I might not have it against white. I'll have it against black here. File, save as, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG in this instance. Save. It replaces one that I was already working on, which is good. Okay, we've got our material done in Photoshop. We come back into Blender, and we want to move over here to the material uh, rollout and we want to create a new material. Now there's one there already but we'll just create a brand new one. Go new material and if we come over here to the diffuse panel we can change the material to say blue and you'll notice the plane on the on the left has changed to blue as well. Diffuse is just the, the basic um, color for, for, for the plane. Um, now we're going to actually apply a texture so we go over to this next area called texture and we've got a few slots here the actual material is the base material and the texture is really a subset of that uh, material. So we come here and we go into textures, we click on an empty slot and we want to go new. Um, this brings up some other panels. We want to come down, this is a, a, a um, like I suppose a fractal generated cloud texture that could be applied to the plane. We don't want to use that. We want to come down here and we want to select uh, image or movie. Once we've selected an, an image file for our texture, we come down and click on Open. We go into 3D Resources, and I've named it Spitfire Texture as a JPEG Open Image. As you can see, my uh, texture map comes in quite nicely. Um, we can test that material on different objects, just like we've done before. We can test it on a sphere or a cube, but it's not mapping correctly to the geometry. We have to set this up so that it will apply um, properly to the actual geometry. If I come over here and click F12 to render, you'll notice it doesn't render on the, on the, uh, on the plane correctly. If I uh, want to get rid of this little viewport here that I've just created, I will just hit this button here to delete it and come back to my UV editor. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to change the type of mapping we want to change it from standard generated coordinates to UV coordinates. Now if I come over here, I'll also set this up to render in a different way. I will go render to a new window, and then I hit render. Now the actual image, now the, uh, the texture is mapped beautifully to the plane. A bit dark. Okay, so we've got our image applied properly, it's working properly, but let's say we want to see it within the little UV editor here. We just come down here, right next to where it says UVs, there's a little browse image to be linked. We click on that button and we just move up to, this, to the particular texture we want to link. 
and there we go. We've now got our our um, texture file uh, brought into the uh, UV image editor, and it lines up very nicely with our actual um, UV un UV unwrap. Okay, the last step here is we want to make sure we we want to be able to see this actually in the 3D viewport. So what do we do? We come over here to where it says uh, display, and just down where it says shading. GLSL, we should have GSL selected. Sometimes it's on other things like multi texture or single texture. We want to have GSL selected and we want to tick on texture solid. Now we've actually got the, um, the plane uh, nicely mapped. I'll just go out into object mode and we'll have a good look at this now. Um, okay. So there we go, we've got our Spitfire textured. Um, a lot more detail can be added to this, but this, this just shows you the basic principle. If we roll it over, you see one of the uh, wings uh, is mapped properly. But if this was to be used in a computer in, a, in an RTS and it was like about you know, this large on the screen, it actually looks quite good. Another thing I've done is I've selected all the faces of this model, select all, and I applied one smoothing smooth shading. Normally it's like this, it's flat. So let's have a look what that looks like. Back to object mode for a second. You can see with flat shading it's, it's a bit hard edged. There's hard edges on it. Um, it's not a, a smooth model. So all we need to do to smooth that out basically, we're not adding any more geometry, we're just adding smoothing to the geometry is to select all. Go back to edit mode, select all. And come over here where it says smooth in the smooth shading area and click smooth. Now we'll go back to object mode again. And as you can see, the plane now looks really quite quite nice. There's still more work to do, I would say. I'd, I'd be, I actually like what I've done underneath here where I've drawn some extra lines for, for detail under the plane. And I'm going to do that as well on top of the plane. And then I think we'd be pretty much finished. And that pretty much covers it. That's uh, modeling and uh, texturing a Supermarine Spitfire low polygon in Blender.